This is Matt from Dice Roundtable. Thanks for checking out this video joining us. And subscribe to the channel if you find it helpful so you're notified of new uploads. As well as like this video if you find it helpful. This is going to be geared towards new people into the hobby. Um, one of the things that I've been encountering with some people that are joining the channel that I've met is they're not really into the tabletop miniatures aspect. Board games they get, they understand. So I'm gonna take this opportunity with some Shadows of Brimstone miniatures to show some basic elements of what we do to get them ready. So sit back, enjoy the video. Hopefully it's very helpful. So this, we're gonna get into the sprues. When you hear someone talk about sprues, this is what we mean. These are the models that are on the sprues. And for the sake of this video, so that they're manageable, I'm gonna cut these into sections. The shadow of brimstone ones here are done in sections. So they give you three that have everything you need so they're identical, which is kind of nice. So, it also comes with bases, just so you know, when they talk about bases, bases are measured in millimeters and diameter across. So that's a 30, and this one is 60, no 40. So that's a 30, and that's a 40. So that'll give you an idea. So when you're doing sprues, I'm gonna just cut a couple. You want to get as close to the model as possible and cut that support piece that's connecting the model to the sprue. Now, you'll figure out what works best for you. You could, usually what I do is I cut everything out, then go clean it up. But for the sake of the video, you'll see what I'm doing. Now, using the second one, that's a little bit longer, these are used, so they work the same. The sprues have these supports for the purpose of supporting the model so that it can be removed from the mold without breaking. So you do have to uh, be prepared to clip. And this will be referred to clipping the models free. So after you've clipped them, every place where they've touched, you're going to have to take the exacto knife and trim it off because there's going to be like a blow burr. Now, some people, when they get really good and really detailed, they'll start using files. I find the exacto knife being very helpful. Now, Shadow of Brimstone is very interesting because the molds are very clean and what i mean is you don't see lines from when the molds are together sometimes you'll have these lines that will show up because the mold was probably two pieces and because it was two pieces there's where the extra plastic kind of pulled and so there's like this little line you just want to make sure you have that sharp exacto knife and just get in there and that's all you're gonna do just make sure you go through the model taking your time and working around I want to finish these up and then I'll be back with another one next up are these tentacles these little connection is a little bit thicker so I'm using my longer pliers cutters and these are just one pieces ready to go and I'm done I'll go in here and trim the bottom off so it's flat as much as possible <gasps> that's where you gotta be careful with a sharp blade if you just lose it. Take your time. That will be a mold line right there. Right there's a mold line. I'm gonna go get a band-aid. All right. So yes, 
Nah, I've been band-aid. So like I said, that was a mold line right there. So this was probably put in and the two mold was closed at the top. So the mold line's here and nowhere else. I'm just gonna finish trimming this off. Now these tentacles and shadows of brimstone and cities of the ancient, they want you to put them on this base, which it fills up most of the base here, which is fine. However, the spiders don't go on a base. They want them separate because technically the, the base would be, have to be much bigger. But what I like is seeing this, I've made the decision not to base these because they're already a flat area. I can just put this on the hex grid map and it's done. So I'm skipping basing those, even the directions encourage you to. Next up is this guy. Now, again, they do recommend to base them. You can see this is on the thicker side. Some of these are really thick, some are not. So I'm using my long clippers to get these off the screw. And going around. So that should be something else in the tool section. Band-aids. Make sure you got band-aids nearby. Because you might cut yourself. Okay. So these just need to be cleaned up. And Shadows of Brimstone, if you're going to get into a hybrid game where it has miniatures and it's a tabletop game or a board game with miniatures that you have to clip like this, this is not a bad one because most of the models have been single pieces. The heroes, they had some work that had to get done as far as being glued. Now these, they kind of wobble a little bit. As you can see, they wobble when you're standing them up. So with that, I will put these on a base. Clean off the sprue burrs. And I'll just run my finger over this. Make sure we got them all. Okay, now that that's done, I'll take my super glue. Now I like the gel because the gel kind of fills in gaps sometimes. So that's nice for the hold. And you're gonna wanna just put it on, count to maybe 20, and that should get a good enough tension that you can let go. And just getting enough tension and you're good to go. And now when you put the model down, and if I hit it, it's not going to fall over. Whereas this one, yes. This one, oh, see, I hit it. Put it back on there. The tentacle, if you hit it, it'll knock over. But it's a little bit chunkier. Now, to see the difference with plastic cement, I'm gonna, especially this Mr. Cement Deluxe, they have colored and clear. Try to go the clear. This definitely hold for a 20 count so that it can bond. But there is a, a stained version. I don't know why they make a stained version because if you don't paint your models right away, it'll stain the model itself too. So look for the clear cement. Like this one I got from Hobby Lobby from the model aisle. So this one is on there good. This one can still wobble if you can see that. And what I'll do is after I have the initial tack, I'll brush around where it's connecting to the base or the other parts of the model so that that cement is like water. It'll seep into the crevices to bond it better. So I do enjoy working with super glue better than the plastic cement. Um, this also has an odor. So if you're sensitive to odors, be careful with this. 
Okay, now this one. We got one, two, three, four pieces to this. So same deal, remove it from the sprue. Now, what you need to see here is there's a little stud. You don't want to cut it at the arm. This is for the connecting. So you have to be mindful. And the directions show that as well. And the same for the leg. The leg has a little peg sticking out here. So I want to cut it next to it. Because there's the hole for the peg. Clip, 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 clip. And I would strongly encourage you to do it over this. If you do it over your lap somewhere else and there's small pieces, you could see it go into the carpet and be on the floor crawling around looking for it. So again, cleaning off the pieces where the sprues were and the burrs just to clean it up. And down here. Here, just take the nub off a little bit because I want to make sure it's flush, flush when uh, connected. And if you don't do this part, it can have an impact on the painted end of it because a painted end, you could end up getting um, rough pieces where paint will collect and stick out. So you do want to be sure you get this as flush as possible. And it may not look like the greatest thing right like this, you see that white spot, but once you paint it, it'll go away because it's flat. So again, I'm going to use super glue. Sometimes I like to put it in if it's got a hole like this, put it in there. It'll start drying out a little bit and it'll build up a surface tension, which will let it hold easier. And just insert in the peg in, insert the peg in. And sometimes you wanna twist it, make sure you got it lined up right. That one's a little loose. So I'm gonna add a little bit more around to that flat surface area to get a better hold. Let's put some on this flat part too. And that's on. Yep. And this goes on the larger base. And there we go. Well, that that's it because it stands really well. So that gives you a basic element of how to de-sprue your miniatures um, using shadows of brimstone as my element. These monsters you'll be doing three times. You'll do it for the heroes and then there's a slightly larger one. Don't feel put off by it. This is a very easy one to put together as well. Just lots of little connections that you just do what we learned from here. Learn the basics and you can do any size miniature. Hope that gives you some courage to pick up and maybe learn how to assemble and paint miniatures. The next part of this series is going to be talking about preparing these for painting. So hope you stick with it and thanks for watching.